Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this last session of this webinar on applications of remote sensing for monitoring water budget within river basins. As we saw in the last three weeks, we started with overview of remote sensing data sets, also some modeling data sets which can be used for river basin monitoring and management. Then we had two guest speakers both focused on using remote sensing and applications of remote sensing data, including remote sensing based modeling data in river basin management. We focused on Nile basin as well as in, on Mekong basin. So now today uh, we're going to demonstrate uh, how to estimate water budget or how to look at freshwater components for two specific river basins. And so it's the surface freshwater budget estimation tutorial. So overall outline would be, we'll just review all the data sources that we went through in last three weeks. And then we will have a live demo in which we will show how to access data and how to analyze this data using GIS or open source QGIS. And we're going to focus on two river basins, uh, Potomac River Basin in USA and Parana River Basin, which is a transboundary river uh, crossing Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, and Paraguay. And then we will summarize not only today's session, but also we will see uh, some comments based on all four sessions and some take home messages so that you can use all these data in your own river basin if you wish. Just a reminder, this is the website as always, and both the homeworks are posted on the website. They're due first one on 4th April, the second one on 17th April. And again, you once you complete the homework and if you have attended all four webinars, you will be awarded a certificate of completion. And please wait a couple of months uh, after the webinar is over to receive your certificate. We'll start with the review of remote sensing data sources that we saw earlier. So just to recap, when you want to monitor water availability in a basin or freshwater availability, these are the major components or freshwater components that are needed. So precipitation, evaporation and transpiration or evapotranspiration, infiltration in uh, soil, uh, then surface water such as soil moisture, the reservoir. In addition, you need groundwater storage and runoff. These components provide complete water budget. And as we mentioned, we're going to focus more on surface in this webinar. We talked about several satellites and sensors and spectral measurements which can be used which are used for deriving these water budget components. Specifically, we talked about trim and GPM, uh, and that provides precipitation. We also saw in um, Nile Basin and Mekong Basin applications, these data were used. Taran Aqua Modis uh, provides evapotranspiration and snow cover data. Landsat provides evapotranspiration, so these we, we saw some of the products based on these data. SMAP provides soil moisture, GRACE and GRACE follow on groundwater, and JSON provides reservoir height. So this is complete water budget. We're going to focus mostly on precipitation, evapotranspiration, and soil moisture, and also a runoff. So here is uh, a link to get more details about all these measurements and how uh, water budget components are derived. We talked about global land data assimilation or GLDAS. We saw um, application of ALDAS in Nile Basin. And now uh, we're going to use this data today to demonstrate our river basin uh, water budget estimation. As we know, inputs for GLDAS, they come from trim, also weather data, they come from observation based data from Princeton University vegetation mask and other land water mask, leaf area index, this comes from MODIS, and clouds and snow, they come from NOAA. 
and TMSP satellites, as we saw earlier. And this model provides output that includes soil moisture, evapotranspiration, surface and subsurface runoff, and snow water equivalent. Last three quantities are quantities which you, you cannot really measure. You, they have, you have to calculate or derive from other measurements. So that's one advantage of this system that we saw earlier, that it provides all the components, uh, including precipitation, evapotranspiration, and runoff so that you can uh, look at surface water budget components. With that, we're going to look at estimation of water budgets. And here is the first order equation, as we have been seeing earlier also. Precipitation is the, it is the source and sink, or so surface receives precipitation from which evapotranspiration is lost to the atmosphere. This is the change in storage, its surface. Uh, runoff and base flow. These two are surface and subsurface runoff or water that either flows on surface or in subsurface. And so these are all the uh, components defined here. Now, it's important to note here that GL does or any model, when we look at these parameters, it's a column model and lateral flow is not included. So this equation is valid in, in the sense that runoff and subsurface runoff, actually it is, there is no net input in the river basin. It, it's really going through the, eventually goes through the uh, river stream or discharge. So that is one of the assumptions in deriving this. Another important thing to remember is that when we look at these uh, parameters from um, geodesk like system, there is no irrigation or uh, other management such as reservoir or dam management are included. So this is all natural hydrologic cycle that we are looking at. So to actually obtain water budget components, you can use number of data sources. As we've been seeing, precipitation can be from uh, GPM iMERGE, this is in near real time you can get it, or in recent years, and you can also use GLDAS for the same. Uh, evapotranspiration, we saw LXE, MOD16, we also saw metric, which is really high resolution ET, uh, but GLDAS also provides ET. Uh, storage, which is change in storage in surface uh, water, is soil moisture, so SMAP, and GLDAS provides this and runoff it's not directly observable observable from satellite but GLDAS can provide that so next we are going to go through how to access and analyze this data using web tools and QGIS so these are the web tools we talked about earlier for uh, GPM iMERGE and GLDAS Giovanni is the tool that we had an overview of uh, we also talked about LXC and GLDAS um, ET. So Surveyor Global provides LXC. Uh, Giovanni, as you can see, provides all of them. So GLDAS and SMAP, they're all available from uh, Giovanni and Appears. These are all the websites given here that you can access these tools. What we are going to do is we're going to demonstrate data access basically from GLDAS for these to river basins. We'll use Parana River Basin. This, uh, as Sean uh, earlier demonstrated, hydrosheds was used to get these river basins and also the sub river basins or sub watersheds within the river basin, Parana and Potomac River Basin. We will be using GLDAS because all of these components are available. And one advantage is that uh, they're all at the same spatial temporal resolution. If you use all the satellite sources, there is more processing involved. Other, uh, suppose you use iMERGE, uh, precipitation, and ET from, say, MODIS or Landsat, different resolutions in space and time are there. So you have to do further processing to um, decide to, to derive water budget overall. In here, uh, GLDAS has that advantage that everything is uh, uniformly gridded in space and time. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Giovanni to first access GLDAS data. And 
then uh, we'll also have a demonstration if you want to download bulk data from GLDAS. How, how can you do that? So that demonstration will be there too. That uses Goddard Earth Science Data and Information Service. Also, as you can see, these are the websites that we'll be looking at. In addition, we'll be looking at QGIS. We will get GLDAS data into QGIS to actually um, calculate water budget or get water budget components. There is a um, link here in our set web page which describes how to download and install QGIS on your computer. So you can use that if you do not have a GIS uh, software on your computer. So before we start uh, the demonstration, we want to uh, show comparison of precipitation uh, from different sources, two different sources. We've been talking about satellite-based precipitation from GPM iMERGE, and then GLDAS uses precipitation from TRIM or TMPA. Precipitation is the most important component for fresh water, and that's the source of fresh water in any river basin. So here we want to show a comparison between these two sources. What is shown here are maps of precipitation in Parana River Basin and Potomac River Basin. And what it shows is average precipitation between April 2014 to June 2018 from GPM iMERGE, and it's in millimeter per month. And in the bottom panel, what is shown is time series of area average precipitation. This is over Parana Basin and over Potomac Basin. The blue line shows iMERGE precipitation and orange shows from GLDAS. So the point here is that we wanted to see that since we are going to derive water budget estimation from GLDAS, at least how uh, it compares with a recent satellite. And as you can see, that the uh, both uh, GPM iMERGE and TMPA based precipitation used in GLDAS, they agree quite well in both these river basins. Um, and th again, this is monthly data between April 2014 to June 2018. So there are some small minor differences, and they maybe because of uh, TRIM and GPM, they have different spatial and temporal resolutions. Uh, trim is quarter degree and every three hour, whereas GPM iMERGE is one tenth of a degree every half hour. So there are some minor differences you see, but they're not huge differences. And so that's a uh, indirect validation for like GLDAS getting precipitation forcing right. Also the annual cycle is captured nicely by both the satellites. Another thing to notice here is that in Parana River, there is a very nice annual cycle with maximum precipitation in December, January, February, or winter months, which is uh, summer in Southern Hemisphere. And if you go to Potomac River Basin, which is in mid-latitude in Northern Hemisphere, you can see higher variability of precipitation. And actually, May, June, July, um, are, so summer months, they have higher precipitation. And so that, that's a different annual cycle. But the main thing to notice here is that because um, this is mid-latitude precipitation system, you see that um, precipitation has high variability, whereas here it's mostly related to uh, motion movement of ITCZ. And because of that, there is a clear December, January, um, February maxima in precipitation. So what we will do is when we demonstrate we will focus on rainy seasons in both the basin, and then we will also show time series of different freshwater components. Here is a list of what we are going to do next. We will first download data by using Giovanni, the web tool that we reviewed in session one. A note here is that for downloading data from Giovanni, have an account on NASA Earth Data. And here is the site where you can register if you don't have an account. Here is the website. Once you register with username and password, you can download data not only just from Giovanni, but also from other NASA data centers. 
once we go to Giovanni and download data, we are going to focus on looking at maps and time series uh, in Giovanni. And then we will download this data and look at water budget components for Parana and Potomac River basins uh, by using QGIS. We will focus on 2017 and 18 to see interannual differences as we saw in the previous slide as precipitation was changing quite a lot between these two years. One thing to note here is that primarily we are going to focus on GLDAS to look at all different water budget components, but we are also going to start with iMERGE, GPM iMERGE precipitation. And this is because iMERGE precipitation is one of the high resolution data sets available from satellites. It's one tenth of a degree latitude longitude and half hourly. And it is available in near real time also with four to five hours data latency and 12 hour data latency in some cases. So if you are interested in monitoring precipitation week by week or even day by day, this is the data set to use. This will be extended from 2000 onwards in near future so that interannual variability can also be looked at by using at this data. More importantly, for forcing any hydrologic model, these data will be quite useful. And that's why uh, we'll start for demonstration purposes with iMERGE, and then we'll do the same with GLDAS. We'll download uh, data using Giovanni. Overall flow will be download data using Giovanni, then import these data into QGIS, and do further processing so we change projection of the data that we get into GIS, we clip it to river basin, and we change units of some of the parameters that come from GLDAS. This is an import, important step that we will review in a minute. And finally, we will see how to estimate water budget in sub-watersheds and then overall over entire basin. So for units in GLDAS, here is a documentation of all the data sets and how different data sets are given in the outputs. So precipitation and evapotranspiration, these data are available in kilogram per meter square per second. And so that if you want annual precipitation accumulated over entire year, then one has to take the precipitation uh, in this units and convert it so that you have multiplier 3600 seconds per hour, 24 hours per day, and days in whatever time frame you're interested in. So for month, it can be days in a month, or if it's season, it's seasonal number of days and year, like 365 or 66. So evapotranspiration and precipitation require this multiplier to change units for runoff and base flow. These are accumulated over three hourly period. They are in kilogram per meter square. And to get them in uh, other time interval, we need to multiply by eight three hour per day interval. So multiply by eight and number of days. So we will be doing that in QGIS also before we actually can look at total water budget. So these are going to be the steps. And now next we will start with Giovanni. We will search and download data by using Giovanni. As you can see on this web page, there is a keyword search. One can enter either product name if you already know or can have source names such as GPM or GLDAS. Uh, if you don't know which product to use, then one can search by disciplines or by measurements. But since we already know, we're going to type iMERGE here. Once you, once you type the product name, it shows all the options available. In this case, you can see iMERGE early and iMERGE late. These are the data sets with four hour, four to five hour latency and 12 hour latency respectively. These data can be used for near real time estimation of precipitation. iMERGE final is a research quality product in which satellite data are merged with rain gauge data. 
And so these merged data require processing and that's why there is data latency of a few months. So for research, this is a great data set to use for more near real time, uh, early and late are more useful. So we're going to start with iMerge Final. Once you search for a particular product, all the variables available for that product are listed here with units, corresponding units, source, temporal and spatial resolutions, and beginning and end dates are given here. As you can see, for final, these data stop in uh, June of 2018, so there is a latency for this data set. For demonstration purpose, we are still going to use this, and uh, we're going to pick this merged satellite gauge precipitation estimates which is monthly data here. As you can see, there are daily and hour, half hourly data also available. We will use monthly data. And you can choose a unit also. We can look at millimeter per month, which provides accumulated rainfall over a month. So pick merge satellite data monthly. Here, there are random error for this data available too, if one wants to explore what the errors are. For top selection here, that is temporal selection, to begin with, we will look at entire period. So it is 2000 April, 2014 April to June of 2018, just to get idea of mean precipitation. But this also shows how to pick different months. If you have daily data, then uh, through calendar, you can pick dates, and if it is half hourly data, hour and minute can be chosen through this uh, boxes here. So for this, what we will get is mean monthly precipitation averaged over these years. For now, we are going to pick data for Parana River Basin, and based on the shape file, we have come up with these coordinates with these west and east longitudes and south and north latitudes. So once you enter that and click on this symbol here, you can see where the domain has been selected. So this is for Parana Basin. And once you select temporal and special and variable selection, there are analysis and visualization options up here. There are maps. Uh, there are time averaged maps. You can animate over this period of animation of precipitation. Time averaged overlay map and monthly and seasonal averages can also be found. We are going to look at time average map. There are other options that one can explore. There is time series also available. And uh, there are histogram and zonal mean can also be found for further analysis. Once we choose all the options, we can plot data by going to this icon. And it launches a workflow and shows how it is progressing. I've already done that to save time here. So here is the map of merged satellite gauge precipitation estimates final. Uh, this is one tenth of a degree millimeter per month, and this is averaged over this period and this region. On the right hand side, you can see the scale or color bar. Important thing to note here is that there is a multiplier or scale factor here, uh, which is 10. And so this is more like 10.92, and this is 330.58 uh, millimeters per month. So please always check that there is a scale factor usually uh, available here or given here. This provides this box with precipitation. So this allows you to uh, visualize. Uh, to download this data, you can go to this download option here on the left hand side. And you can have multiple formats here from NetCDF, PNG, um, and KMZ, which you can view with Google Earth. We are going to download GeoTIFF image so we can then further view it or process it in QGIS. Just by clicking on this, you can save this image on your computer, which I've already saved for later use. 
once you have downloaded the data you can go back to data selection back to data selection and choose any other analysis option or other data if you wish just to show time series we are going to have area average time series which we just saw for GLDAS and iMERGE earlier in the presentation so area average time series can also be found just by picking that and plot data again to save time I have this time series already um, and this is the plot of the time series again for iMERGE precipitation this is the time series we saw as you can see 2017 and 18 uh, there was diff there are differences in peak precipitation of several millimeter per month this is average um, uh, accumulated over every month so what we're going to do next is we're going to look at these two years 2017 and 2018 we will go to GLDAS and look at different water budget components for surface water balance so that is specifically precipitation evapotranspiration and surface runoff these three quantities we are going to look at we can also download and look at base flow runoff and soil moisture just for comparison or getting overall information about these parameters also so what next we will do is we'll take annual mean water budget components using Giovanni for these two years and then we will focus on rainy season also to see how overall water components change so going back one can select now with GL does there are multiple options again for different versions and so here 25 is for quarter degree so 0.25 and one here is one degree so we will choose 0.5 degree option and we'll choose the latest version this is monthly 2.1 version from NOAA uh, 0.25 GLDAS NOAA 0.25 version so we click on that we can uncheck that and search GLDAS data once you search all entire list appears all the data sets available from the model are listed here and very important to note here are the units for each of the parameter we are going to choose variable evapotranspiration then total precipitation rate so total means it includes both liquid and frozen precipitation if there is snowfall then it's also included in there further we will look at storm surface runoff and one can look at base flow groundwater runoff also although for annual budget we will be looking at just surface runoff and as you can see here the availability is from 2000 to 2019 February there is a little bit of latency here uh, one thing is that starting from 2000 where satellite data are assimilated in it so this is a relatively long time uh, record so one can take mean and use that to look at interannual variability with respect to that also for now what we're going to do is pick 2017 January to 2017 December and still this is Parana Basin so this is going to provide maps time average maps so average annual maps of these parameters again you can plot data here and we will see that we already have this data set so plots these are GLDAS data for 2017 January to end of that year 
uh, because it it takes zero GMT on this day it says January 2018 but this is 2017 um, January to 2017 December midnight so here are all the maps you can see there are precipitation evapotranspiration again uh, there is this multiplier here this quickly provides special pattern of different parameters here is total precipitation and that is that is storm uh, surface runoff so this you can download the same way just by clicking on the download all these geotiffs can be downloaded so this is evapotranspiration precipitation surface runoff and base flow just by clicking on this these files can be saved on the computer and i have already saved them for further use we'll look at it later now going back we're going to pick 2018 January to 2018 December and plot data will provide maps and download options which can be downloaded for picking seasonal one can go to say 2016 December 2017 February so this is December January February starting from 2016 December to 2017 February which is the peak rainfall season in Parana Basin by doing that and then plotting data we can get maps of these seasonal variables similarly for December January February centered in 2018 we will choose 2017 December to 2018 February this provides rainy season for December January February 1718 and we can contrast these two using GIS later but here you can already see these maps if you look at plots this is December January of um, December January February of 17 and you can quickly look at the maps and compare visually so this allows you to look at or analyze data without even downloading and if you're not interested in detailed study you can just view and save this as images or you can download save and then later use with different uh, analysis options that we will see so this is uh, what we have already downloaded for Parana River Basin and also for Potomac River Basin these data are downloaded so next what we will see is we will close Giovanni we will go to QGIS and look at water budget components through uh, GIS clipping to the uh, Parana River Basin shapefile changing units and then combining different uh, parameters so I'm going to stop Giovanni and start QGIS QGIS analysis here is another website that we want to introduce. It's GES Disk or Disk GSFC NASA Gov. This site, this tool allows you to subset data temporally and spatially just like Giovanni, but it allows bulk transfer of data. So as we saw, GLDAS, which started in 2000 and extends to present. Similarly, other data sets such as Trim also is a long-term data set. If you are interested in looking at interannual variability or long-term mean and want to download all the data sets on your computer, then this is a site to use. This requires login also through NASA Earth Data username and password. Once you log in, you can search data by different categories like in Giovanni or if you know the product name, 
you can enter it here and we are just going to use uh, GLDAS NOVA 2.1 version that we saw in Giovanni. Once you search, all the options are avail available. Uh, this is quarter degree, this is three hourly, this is quarter degree in one month and so on. This is the data set we use from Giovanni and we are going to again look at it, how to get bulk download. You can see that other data access tools are available here including Giovanni. The one that allows us bulk download is subsetting and getting data. Here there is a time range that one can choose and for demonstration we'll start in 2018 January and go all the way to the latest month available. For subsetting specially one can either draw a box approximate box or if you know coordinates which we do for Prana River Basin you can enter longitude and latitudes here and then it shows where this region is. You can also pick variables to download. The model variable names and descriptions they are provided here along with the units. We will start with evapotranspiration surface runoff, base flow, and total precipitation. Once you choose these parameters, you can just say get data and it just comes up with list of files these are in NetCDF format. So these are monthly files as you can see, January, February and so on. This is the range. Instruction for download is given here. By clicking here, download the list of links. Once you download here, it saves all these file names as a text file and then on your computer, either Windows, Linux, or Mac, any, uh, you can go to um, the, the X term or command line and then use either wget or curl command along with this text file name and that downloads all the data on your computer. Just by clicking on this curl or uh, wget, you can see the instruction of how to download these open source software and then use install and use on your computer to get the data. So this is just a useful uh, website that allows bulk data transfer. Now we're going to go and start looking at QGIS analysis. So now we will analyze the water budget components that we downloaded from Giovanni using this QGIS interface. Here is the window I just opened, QGIS window, and have added OpenStreetMap through OpenLayer plugin as a reference map or base map. In addition, I have added the Parana River sh Basin shapefile, which we downloaded or extracted by using the HydroShed tool in session one. So this is the shapefile. Now, eventual goal of this exercise is to estimate different water budget components and overall water balance in each of these basins. And for that, we have to know area of each basin. If you check properties of the shapefile, you will see that the coordinate reference system for the shapefile or CRS is WGS84, um, simple let long um, projection or CRS. But for, for more accurate area estimation, it's important that we use projection, which is appropriate for this region. And so for that, we are going to reproject this shapefile in more appropriate CRS. And here we have chosen for Parana River Basin, this one, South America, Alper, Equal Area, Conic. When we go to 
Potomac River Basin, we will use USA contiguous equal area conic. So for now, this is the CRS that we are going to use. All water budget components that we include in QGIS will have to be converted to the CRS. So here we can pick the file name and add, um, click OK to get the reprojected shape file. I have already uh, saved uh, the projected shape file and so I'm going to add that in here. So this is the reprojected or with different CRS shape file right here. Now we're going to start adding different water budget components. We will start with GLDAS data. As you can see, these are the data we downloaded by using Giovanni. If you recall, in Giovanni, the file names we downloaded were quite descriptive, descriptive and quite long, and I have truncated the names just for convenience. So it shows source of the data, data parameter, and for which year the data were averaged. So here is, for example, this is precipitation for 2017. So we're going to include that layer in here. And this is the box coordinates that we provided to Giovanni and extracted the data. Again, what we're going to do is save this in appropriate CRS. And we're going to save this file as precipitation projected in different CRS and we are going to save it temporarily for now and you can say OK and you will be able to see slight difference between the two projection we're going to remove this file and work with this reprojected file from now on so now for precipitation again we need to do one more operation, as we talked earlier, we have to clip this data to the shapefile. For that, we are going to use raster extraction clipper function. Here is the layer that we want to clip to the shapefile. And again, we can create a temporary file here. and select mask, which is the shape file to which this layer has to be clipped. And then by clicking OK, you can get this clipped shape file. So if you see, this precipitation data now are clipped to this shape file. Next, we have to do unit conversion for precipitation. As I mentioned earlier, these data are in kilograms per meter square per second. And we want to find out annual uh, precipitation. So we are going to scale this by a factor. And for that, we are going to use raster calculation. So use ra raster calculator. We're going to save this file as precipitation for 2000 as annual precipitation. We're going to use this clipped precipitation layer that will add that to this raster calculator expression. And now we will multiply this by 3600 seconds per hour multiplied by 24 hours per day multiplied by 365 day per year. So now you can see that this annual precipitation is given in kilograms per meter square per year rather than per second. So this is the data that we will be using to estimate water budget. Next, we are going to add ET and ET also has the same units. We have to go through the same operation where we clip the file 
and change the unit. Now ET also is in kilograms per meter square per second and so we do exactly the same operation to get this data. Runoff on the other hand and I'm going to demonstrate that here that runoff data they are in kilograms per meter square per three hours so they are accumulated over three hours so for this once we clip this data and I already have clipped data here so I'm going to add that and bear with me while I find the file so this is the clipped runoff so this is the clipped runoff and to get that in annual units we use raster calculator and save this file as annual runoff so we choose clipped runoff data and multiply it by 8 so there are 8 3 hour blocks in 24 hour day so we multiply this by 8 as this is accumulated for 3 hours and then multiply it by number of days in a year. So that is 365. And so now runoff here is in kilograms per meter square per year. So now we have all three precipitation, ET and runoff. Once we convert this unit to annual units, then we can actually calculate approximate water budget for surface water budget and I have already done this for both uh, 2017 and 18 so I'm going to add that project to the QGIS here I have you can see here precipitation evapotranspiration runoff for 2018 annual and precipitation evapotranspiration runoff for 2017 annual so these data were first reprojected then clipped to shapefile and then units were changed then uh, colors were added and we can just see how to one example you can go to properties and style choose single band pseudo color you can either fix minimum or maximum or these are actually the ones that were found in the data so they that range is kept here you can pick appropriate color table and use I have chosen 20 equal interval here for for the precipitation and that's what this is showing and that is this is 2018 and this is 2017 so as you can see 2018 clearly had more rainfall here in the eastern and northeastern part of the basin and this was all, we also saw this in iMERGE earlier when we looked at uh, time series also 2018 had more rainfall and if you look at the special pattern it is this region where 2018 had excess rain over 2017. Similarly uh, I have evapotranspiration for both years uh, and the values you can click and see the table here they range from 480 to 1473 for 2018 and here they go up to 1461 so not a whole lot of a difference but again you can see that if you this is 2017 this is 2018 so you can see slight difference in pattern so evapotranspiration clearly was here more in 2017 and more here in 2018 so interannual differences you can see 
by looking at these maps. Lastly, this is runoff data. This is runoff for 2018. And then this is runoff for 2017. So you can see that the location where maximum runoff is occurring is changing in two years. And that will depend on a number of factors such as precipitation itself, uh, terrain, what kind of soil there is. Um, so a number of factors will decide how runoff changes. But so these are uh, some major differences and some uh, subtle differences are there. Where you have less precipitation here, there is both evapotranspiration and uh, uh, runoff. Both are less, as one might expect. So these are all the data that we have. And to estimate approximate surface water balance, what we can do is we can use, again, raster calculation. Go to raster calculator. And we can choose a file to save the data here. You can, so say water balance for 17, say. And then in calculation, you would use precipitation, which is the source minus evapotranspiration, which is the sink, and minus runoff. This is a sink too. So with this expression, you will be able to get water balance that we already have here. So here is the approximate surface water balance derived from precipitation, evapotranspiration, and surface runoff. As you can see from the values, so precipitation and evapotranspiration, they are the two major components. Runoff is relatively small, order of magnitude small compared to precipitation and uh, evapotranspiration. But nonetheless, it contributes to overall balance of how much water is available in each subbasin. So here you can see it ranges from minus 158 to 1549. Uh, this is for 2017. So these are the regions where there is deficit of water. So runoff and evapotranspiration are in excess to precipitation. So there is deficit of water surface. And here you have um, quite a lot of precipitation more than evapotranspiration and runoff. Similarly, if you look at 2018, you will see patterns are somewhat similar, but there are quantitative differences between how much water is available in which region. So this is 2018 and this is 2017. So here you can see that also these, there are regions where you have deficit of fresh water. That means evapotranspiration and runoff, they are more than precipitation. And where usually there is less precipitation, these are the area where water is lost uh, to the basin. Again, these are approximate numbers in the sense that we are not including any uh, subsurface runoff or we're not looking at groundwater also. But over annual time scale uh, and over a big basin, precipitation and evapotranspiration are the um, uh, highest components. So that's what we are looking at with surface runoff since we have it from GLDAS. So here is how we can download data, uh, pre-process, and then estimate water balance for annual time scale. Next, I want to show how you can calculate statistics to see in each basin how much uh, what water is available or if there is deficit or there is excess of water. So here also we use zonal statistics and choose 
say WB 17 here. This is the water balance for 17. And you can say WB 17 here. And what we are going to do is we are just going to look at mean for each sub basin. How much mean uh, water is available so that by clicking OK, you can calculate that and similarly go back and do the same for 2018. And when you do that, these statistics are available or stored in this shapefile attribute table. So click on the shapefile and open the attribute table. So these are all the uh, sub basin identification numbers. And if you go here, you will see this is mean for 2017, water balance for 2017 and water balance for 2018. And for there are nine, if you look at the sub basin here, There are nine sub basins in this river basin, as we saw earlier. Each of this, this is listed here. So as you can see, these two basins, they have in 2017, that is water deficit. Almost everywhere there is um, precipitation dominating over evapotranspiration and runoff, but in these two basins in 2017, there was deficit of water. This is just surface water. And again, these, what this shows is just the procedure, how you can estimate um, more accurate data you have and complete budget you have. If you have uh, subsurface runoff and groundwater, then you can clearly do um, better water balance analysis. However, this gives you some idea of which area had deficit or excess of um, precipitation or fresh water. You can, you can click on this and save this as CSV files for further analysis. Another thing to note here is that you can open the attribute table and go to the edit so it highlights all the basins. You can open this calculator, field calculator, and you can calculate area of each of these sub basins. So this would be the name, let's see, sub basin area. And I would, because these are huge basin, sub basins we can to increase this and then you can also choose decimal with one point precision and you can increase this to say 20 just to be safe you go to geometry and click on this taller area, double click, and then click OK, and that gives you area of each basin, which is available here. So this is sub-basin area for each of these. These are available. And now, once you save this SCSV file, you can then do total water amount analysis so we are going to do that next using um, CSV file so before we go to the CSV file I want to show the same analysis or the result of the same analysis for Potomac River Basin 
And here is the basin. It's relatively a smaller basin compared to Parana River Basin. Uh, as we talked earlier, Parana River is a transboundary river going through multiple countries. This is compared to that a smaller river basin. And so you can see that this is clipped uh, GLDAS data. This is precipitation data clipped to uh, the shape file. But final results are shown here. Here is the final water balance analysis in the sense that it is precipitation minus evapotranspiration minus runoff, so for surface. Here is 2017 again had, had less rain in Potomac Basin also, and so you see there are some regions where precipitation was less and evapotranspiration and runoff dominated. Um, 2018, um, pretty much um, higher precipitation compared to uh, evapotranspiration and uh, runoff that you can see here. So just this is 2017 and this is 18. So this resolution here is uh, quarter degree latitude longitude. And uh, being a small basin, you can see this clearly that these are the each grid boxes in GLDAS. All the blues here um, are where you have less uh, precipitation, uh, which is true in general that precipitation here is more and here it is less. So again, here also we did the same analysis uh, with zonal statistics. And if you look at the attribute table here, you can see mean for 2017 and 18 are here. Are here and basin area is also found just as we found for Prana River Basin. So this file is also saved as CSV and we will look at it next. So uh, we saw that for both the river basins, we went through the analysis. And next, what we want to see is we saved uh, the attribute tables or um, water balance data for each sub-basin in this CSV file, along with the area of each sub-basin. So here is what I wanted to demonstrate that uh, if you click, if you click on view and identify feature, and you can click on this area, it shows which which basin corresponds to which basin here. So what you see is sub area, and then this is the identification number. You can click on different sub basin, and so that corresponds to the table. So in this table, you can go back to the shape file, identify the features, and look at the uh, area and identification of the um, sub-basin to correspond which basin uh, we are we're talking about. So here, now we saw that this is the uh, precipitation minus evapor evapotranspiration minus runoff for 2017 in kilograms per meter square per year. Similarly, this is for 2018. This, the sub-basin area, this is in meter square. So when you look at water, uh, because of the density of the water, um, which is uh, 1,000 um, kilogram per meter cube, so that way, uh, when you convert this um, numbers, this kilogram per meter square of water is equivalent to a millimeter of water. So this is millimeter per year. 
actually, and this is average over the each sub basin. So we multiply these numbers by the area to get meter cube um, of, um, so we divide these numbers by thousand to make it from millimeter to meter and then multiply by this meter square of area. So in last two columns, these multiplications are shown and these are in cubic meters. So these are so many cubic meters of data uh, of water available in each sub basin. So clearly here, um, total water deficit is this much. So um, evapotranspiration and runoff uh, are more here. Uh, everywhere it is more positive in 2018. But so here is like total water quantity that you can see for each sub basin. And if you now you can add them all to get overall for entire basin. Um, how much um, cubic meter of water was there for each year. So this is this just bulk idea gives you idea of how much water was there in surface water was there in each sub basin, how that each sub basin contributed to overall um, river basin water availability. So this is, uh, this is same for Potomac River also. We did the same thing. And you can see that, of course, area here is, is smaller compared to Parana River. And also here, you can see in both years, overall, overall mean. Uh, averaged over each sub basin mostly precipitation was more than evapor evapotranspiration and runoff combined so uh, this is this gives you idea how each sub basin is behaving how much water there is per year and this information can help in managing water better or uh, managing river basin better so the idea of uh, showing uh, this exercise was that how can you start with remote sensing or modeling data, um, go through all these steps and, and come up with uh, this final cubic meter of water over this river basin. Year after year, you can do this for other years too and see variability, how things vary over years and which basin are more susceptible for more variability uh, or more extremes. And that can help in management, um, better management of river basin or sub basin. So that brings us to the conclusion of this um, webinar series. And for that, we want to summarize a few points here. So we had four weeks. We started by overview of all the data sets and which provide freshwater components. For second week, we had a, a guest speaker, Dr. Ben Sajcik. He talked about using remote sensing data such as TRIM and MODIS evapotranspiration and LX evapotranspiration and GRACE data to uh, estimate Nile River Basin water budget. He also used LDAS data to derive Nile uh, Basin water budget in certain uh, sub-basins. Then week three, we had uh, Dr. John Bolton. He talked about water resources and flood monitoring in Mekong Basin. In his case, he actually used remote sensing data to um, drive or force a customized hydrology model or soil and water assessment tool or SWOT model. So we had these two in here. We already had uh, remote sensing or uh, modeling data that uh, were used here. Data were used to drive a model and customize a model to look at more detail uh, flood monitoring and water resources uh, monitoring and management. Then finally, today, we just saw how we can use some of the data sets that we have been talking about, uh, how we can analyze and get estimate of um, precipitation, evapotranspiration runoff, which, which are major components for surface water.
balance. And so we saw that for two river basins, two very different types of river basins, one more tropical, one mid-latitude. Um, Parana was a big river, Potomac River was relatively smaller river with different processes, different uh, vegetation, and all those features, they contribute to sub-river basin, also entire river basin. And so, so we saw um, how to estimate like a cubic meter of water available within sub-basin. And by adding that, you can look at um, overall uh, water available in that entire basin, and you can do this year after year. One thing um, before we summarize, um, we want to point out that we did not have time to go through the seasonal contrast. We saved data for um, winter, like December, January, February for Parana and May, June, July for Potomac River basins. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make these data available on our website along with the shape files for Parana River and Potomac River basins. So you can download the data in, and do the analysis um, and follow the same steps and contrast different seasons, rainy seasons for two years, 17 and 18. And you can even look at other seasons by downloading data from you know, Giovanni and then going through the same uh, procedure. So this is um, one way to look at long-term variability also. So to summarize, all fresh fur components are available based on either remote sensing and or earth system models. Both uh, provide all data components. One thing to note though, that different satellites and sensors, they all have varying spatial and temporal resolutions and coverage. Also quality differs um, in different sensors. So if suppose you want to use say iMERGE precipitation and uh, ev evapotranspira uh, transpiration from Landsat, uh, one is 30 meter resolution, one is one tenth of a degree resolution. So you have to, uh, do some more processing to get them all on same uh, special resolution, either upscale or downscale the data. Um, so that is one advantage of using a modeling system like GLDAS, uh, in which you have integrated um, surface-based and remote sensing-based uh, data assimilated into model, uh, which does water balance and energy balance both and provides uniformly graded, more frequent uh, output. Uh, so it's easy to analyze, but they both have their advantages and limitations in the sense that these are direct observations. These have um, model processes, which may have some uh, assumptions um, that we have to work with. So remote sensing based data together with GIS can help in assessing water budget in river basins. As we saw, um, we focused on surface, but if we have uh, groundwater data and we include subsurface runoff, we can have all water fluxes in the basin. On the other hand, you can just look at the change in storage. So just look at integrated soil moisture from surface to subsurface. Also look at snow depth if snow is present. Um, in model, we don't have surface water, so we don't have discharge information. So it's very difficult to look at the storage change, but that's why we looked at fluxes of precipitation, evapotranspiration and runoff. But um, you can go back and analyze soil moisture in similar fashion and see how it changes. Um, so that also should correspond to change in uh, P minus E minus runoff. And we can do this for monthly or seasonal time scale, um, annual or interannual time scale for a better um, water resources and river basin management. All these data, uh, GLDAS data as well as satellite data that we talked about of the products, they have been validated uh, selectively with surface measurements. Um, but for any region, if you want to use this, it is highly recommended that you assess uh, performance of these data sets in your own region. So if you have stream gauge data or if you have other in situ data, it helps to validate uh, model and satellite remote sensing and modeling output with that local uh, in situ data so that you have a better idea of how um, 
model and satellite data are performing in your region before you start making decisions based on uh, water balance that you derive from these data sets. And more importantly, this is one piece of information, very important piece of information for overall, overall river basin management, uh, which is water budget components. But additionally, we also need uh, socioeconomic characteristics uh, of the basin, also river discharge, so the stream gauge data are extremely useful. Um, ecosystem information also is useful. Uh, and so these combination of all these data will uh, improve or have a better sustainable river basin management um, capability. Uh, we provide, we focus mostly on this water budget component part, which is of course a very, very important part of overall um, water basin, river basin management. And um, it, remote sensing or modeling data, they provide very nice spatial and temporal coverage compared to in situ data. So that way it provides um, integrated uh, water resources management capability. And so this overall webinar was focused on just demonstrating this piece of information coming from remote sensing and model that you can use with other information for better river basin management. So uh, we thank you for attending this webinar. Um, and uh, I want, on behalf of our entire RSET team, uh, we have uh, Sean McCartney, who helped me uh, with this QGIS analysis. We have um, Brock Levins and Salvin uh, Hudson. He, they have organized this uh, webinar. Uh, and Elizabeth Hook, she is an editor. Uh, she's the editor of uh, all these presentations. So on behalf of our entire team, we want to thank you for attending uh, this uh, webinar series. Also, uh, we have uh, these slides available in Spanish. Uh, David Barberto has translated this in Spanish. So if you go to our set website, you can look at these slides in Spanish also. Uh, on website uh, both the homeworks are there in google form so please complete both the homework one is due tomorrow and the second homework is due on 17th of april so again thanks and uh, if you have any questions we can address those now so uh, question one is really a very important question uh, about uh, base flow uh, so if you if you consider uh, um, base flow can yes it can contribute um, positively or negatively uh, to surface water budget that is true is there a script that allows download of gls data directly from giovanni um, if you you, uh, we didn't have time to go through that, but if you go to the download link, it shows lineage. That lineage has all the files, and then you can click on them and download, or you can save those URLs and then use wget or curl and download. However, those files are not subsetted, they are global. So that's why we went through uh, GS test website that you can subset temporarily and specially and then download the files also these files that you download in bulk they are in netcdf format so if you want to use them in gis you would have to either convert them in geotiff or you can use python and r to do uh, analysis on netcdf file so in in question three how to interpret the deficit in, in water budget. So here, I would say that um, we, we're not looking at entire water budget because we do not have, we're not uh, considering uh, ground water or subsurface runoff. Just surface, you're looking at precipitation, evapotranspiration and runoff. So when you say negative, that means in that region, there was more uh, evapotranspiration, maybe more vegetation or just 
or barren land, so more evaporation. So either evapotranspiration or, or transpiration or evaporation was more, and runoff also contributed to that. Um, in in oh, it's more than precipitation. So that you are actually at um, annually you were losing that water more than precipitation can replenish it. That's the way I would interpret that. But um, we're not, you know, whatever is left is otherwise would be change in storage. So that negative uh, number also indicates that the surface water storage is negative in that case. So it's the same thing that um, uh, precipitation could not replenish that evaporate transpiration and runoff. And so you have negative change in negative storage over time. The storage is decreasing. So um, how is runoff estimated in GLDAS example for Parana? Is it a satellite estimate or a closure term? Uh, it's a closure term. Um, it is uh, based on water balance. Is there any comparison between remote sensing results with the observation data? Uh, you can definitely find, you can definitely find um, publications uh, which compare remote sensing and observation data. And uh, we can also uh, try and find um, some, some papers which use uh, GLDAS or other remote sensing data and compare with observations. But right now, I, I don't have those references, but I'm pretty sure that uh, there are quite a few. Is it possible to download GL data for the Star River Base in West Bengal, India? So if you go to uh, Hydrosheds and you can try and see if you can isolate that river basin. Otherwise, you may have to go to SRTM or Ester DAM data and do the same. Post is saying remote sanctity of different special is it better to upscale or downscale? So um, upscale would be better because when you downscale you would be interpolating data and we don't I don't think that is right like precipitation or evapotranspiration interpolated in space would not make sense. So upscaling is better in my opinion. So question eight, again, um, I'm, I'm not certain of um, the answer because um, there, may, there are several papers that compare remote sensing with um, observations. And we can definitely find a few and post them on our set website. So question nine is about um, uh, decision making in on weekly time scale. What is the finer special resolution based on procedure we saw today? Um, so for if you if you want weekly time period, so GLDAS data are available on three hourly time scale, so you can use that. So GLDAS is available at three hourly time scale, so you can use that to get weekly 
water budget data. Is the GLDA soil moisture data validated with some ground truth data? Yes, they have been validated. Actually, there is a um, new version. It's called Land Information System that assimilates soil, soil moisture data from SMAP. So that is a newer version that um, is used by, by some uh, groups. This GLDAS data that we talked about, those soil moisture data are validated. So if you go to LDAS website and you will find the link in session one presentation, um, there are references and there are also presentations which talk about validation. If you're not using groundwater data, then is it correct to say that this is data for the river and it's lost only and not the river basin? You would need to go into the storage data for that. Yes. So actually, um, that's what I mentioned earlier, that for this webinar purposes, we focused mostly on the surface components. You do need to look at storage part. And ideally, you should also have discharge data from river and groundwater. So if you have all these components, then you can be sure of actual water balance. But nevertheless, annually, if you see, um, it is the precipitation received and water lost to either ground or to to atmosphere, then whatever remains is uh, storage in soil and discharge in river. So that's how the partitioning would occur. So I, I think um, on large scale, precipitation minus evapotranspiration is considered like first order water balance. Whatever is residual is distributed in different ways, e either in, in soil or in, in in stream or in it, it percolates in. And again, um, somebody who is expert in hydrology, somebody who has done hydrological analysis using these data, they probably have better idea of how to use this information more efficiently. The idea here from our part was to to introduce all these resources which are available and show a few steps that you can use to, to utilize this data, and analyze this data. So if there are no more questions, we really want to thank you for attending this webinar series. All the homeworks are posted online, all the material, is available and also recordings will be posted online also. For you to work with data, uh, shape file, river basin shape files and data sets will also be made available. And we request that when you receive a survey link, please give us your feedback. More importantly, if you use any of these data, for river basin management in your own region. And if you use it for any decision making or management um, purposes, and if you would let us know, we'd really appreciate that. So homework two is uh, posted today. It's um, online now. And it, both the homeworks are um, in Google form uh, answer. You will have to answer them in Google form. So the first homework is due tomorrow, and the second homework is due on 17th of April. So here's the website, and here's homework assignment.
So on RSET, if, you, if you're not part of RSET listserv, um, you can join that to, uh, to stay uh, familiar with all the activities that are going on and all the webinars that are coming up. So our next webinar um, is going to be on disaster scenario, uh, different how to uh, monitor and uh, respond to different scenario, uh, disaster scenarios that will be the next webinar. So this webinar uh, about disaster scenario will be in uh, April. And there's also going to be another uh, webinar, advanced webinar on water quality monitoring and that's going to be in June. So if you join our set listserv, you will be sent announcement of all the upcoming uh, trainings. This webinar will be uh, conducted both in English and Spanish. So again, on behalf of the RSET team, uh, we want to thank you all for attending this webinar series and we hope to see you in our future trainings. Thank you.